Jurassic Time presents an original audio drama of the early unproduced script to Jurassic Park. Revised and edited from Michael Crichton's original script by Rick Carter. Tropical rain falls in drenching sheets in the night, hammering the corrugated roof of a clinic building along the coast of Costa Rica, roaring down the metal gutters, splashing on the ground in a torrent. Another sound blends with the rain, a deeper rumble that builds until it is clear, the rhythmic thumping of a helicopter. The helicopter bursts low through the ocean fog and roars overhead, circles, and comes back. On the side of the helicopter is a logo, InGen Construction. When the helicopter settles in the wet sand of the beach, uniformed men jump out and fling open the big side door, shouting in Spanish. Two crewmen carry a limp body toward the clinic. Dr. Roberta Carter, wearing a tank top and jeans with a stethoscope around her neck, rushes out to greet them. Ed Regis, a man in a safari shirt, moves ahead of the construction workers on the stretcher. Regis speaks. Is there a doctor here? I am. We've got three badly injured men. The rain is falling in heavy drops as they rush the men on the stretcher towards the entrance. Inside, the orderlies are now bringing in the other two men on stretchers. The doctor lifts the blood-soaked shirt and looks away. What happened to him? It... It was a construction accident. It looks like he was eaten by a bulldozer. One of the injured worker's lips start to move, his tongue thick. Raptor. Oh, the raptor. Dr. Carter looks to one of the local nurses. What does that mean? The nurse shakes her head. I don't know, doctor. Los raptor no es español. Dr. Carter looks from the bloody covers of one of the men down to his exposed legs where there are deep, unbloodied teeth marks. A paleontologist's brush reveals the teeth, then full skull of a velociraptor fossil, still in the earth. Below it, a clawed toe is partially excavated from the rock. A hand reaches in with a brush, and we can see that the claw is actually as big as the hand. A ruler is placed alongside it. Dawn breaks at an excavation site in Montana. Dr. Alan Grant is bent over the claw. He wears jeans and a faded t-shirt, all covered in pale dust. He's a no-nonsense field scientist, crusty, grumpy, quiet-spoken. He wipes dust from dark wireframe glasses with his knuckle. Should we document this exposure before we go further, then take the claws out? A student asks. Grant nods. Don't rush it. It's a perfect specimen of Velociraptor Antaropus. A vicious, predatory dinosaur. Ellie Sattler, Grant's wife and partner, walks over to Grant as he moves towards a group of three trailers with tents extending outwards like spokes. She is carrying a notepad computer. The screen shows a yellow outline of eggs in a nest. Data flashes on the edges of the image. We got tomography of the nest site on D14. The P-Val is under 0.1L. Ellen, you were right. They're a mucho nest. As they walk, another student, covered in chalk dust, falls into step. Ellie, would you take a look at this? The student asks. It's a painting, showing predatory dinosaurs at the edge of a blue lake, with an island offshore where herbivores breed. Ellie lowers the picture to see the same perspective. The island in the prehistoric lake is now a hill in the Badlands, where the students are working. What do you think? Not bad. Except the lake should be milky green. Milky green? There hasn't been a lake for 65 million years. How do you know what color it was? Because it was alkali. The albedo suspended by carbonates would have made it pale, milky green. He then turns to Grant. How are the dinosaurs, Dr. Grant? Hmm. The dinosaurs are good. Except some of those should... Be eating eggs. Or caring for nests of eggs like bird parents. This is obviously an ongoing disagreement between Grant and Ellie. They have different ideas about the behavior of small carnivores, such as the Velociraptor. 
the student knows when to leave. Grant and Ellie are now walking in an area where large sections of earth containing fossils are being readied with plaster, waiting to be loaded onto trucks. They stop next to a fossilized cone-shaped nest, with broken eggs embedded into it. We don't know that these eggs were hatched. Nor do we know that they were eaten by vicious egg-eating raptors that ate their own. I never said I thought that. Neither you, or I, or anyone else was ever there. We can't know. It's all a mystery. Grant and Ellie look out at the sun rising over the vast expanse of landscape before them. They hear the sound of a helicopter. Within a few moments, a tremendous wind starts blowing everything around. The swirling dust covers the recently exposed dinosaur fossils. Grant and Ellie lean over some of the exposed fossils and yell to the students scurrying around them. Baffle us! Get something to cover these fossils! He looks up to the helicopter approaching. It lands right on top of one of the dig sites. Grant is furious. Until he sees John Hammond the powerful financial benefactor of Grant's work emerge from the helicopter. Grant rushes to meet him. Mr. Hammond, what brings you here? Hammond parades around and laughs. The whole idea of digging up dinosaur fossils <laughs> suddenly seems so primitive. <laughs> what do you mean? I want to take you someplace. I want to show you something that you will find extremely interesting. Grant and Ellie don't quite know how to respond. Hammond mysteriously smiles. It's not punishment. It's a reward. They enter one of the many work trailers on site. We've got a great team of paleontologists assembled on this dig. We've just uncovered a velociraptor nesting site... It's almost like a colony of individual units. Grant's tone belies his biggest fear. Hammond is done with funding their dig. I, I hope you're not stopping our funding. I'm not going to close you down, Dr. Grant. You and Ellie are going to close the site down yourselves. Grant and Ellie are confused by Hammond. It will later be revealed that I want you two to be in charge of something very important. Something which relates directly to what you have just found here, in the desert. Hammond then moves further into the trailer. <laughs> the truth is that I am very <laughs> excited. Let me tell you about all of this from the beginning. For the last 10 years, I've been working to build a fabulous, fabulous resort off the coast of Costa Rica. We didn't know anything about it. No one did, and it has been kept an absolute secret. It's very special, very unusual, and I wanted it to be a surprise. I am delighted to say that after ten long years, my resort is now finished. Well, almost finished, and I desperately wanted my friends to see it first. And I thought of you, Ellie, and your husband, immediately. You did. What Alan means is he's not the resort type. I am. But I can hardly get him to go out to a restaurant. Well, how long will we be there? As long as you like. Let me tell you where we are going. He pauses and looks out the window. It's not exactly a zoo. It's more like a game preserve. Sort of a park. It's an island 100 miles off the coast of Costa Rica called Isla Nublar. Actually, an extinct volcano, though there's still volcanic steam in places. 24 square miles 
making it the largest privately owned animal preserve in North America. The helicopter flies low over the sunlit sea, isolated in the ocean, shrouded in fog. The island looks otherworldly. The pilot speaks. Starting our descent now. Hang on, folks. Landing can be a little rough. The helicopter plunges into the mist. They bounce wildly in the thermals, jagged rock walls close by, tree branches reaching out through the mist. Passengers look from one side to the other. It's bad on all sides. The landing tower guides them. 500 feet. 400 feet. Intermittent clouds block everything, and we see only the flashing flare of the helicopter's own lights. When the fog clears, the cliffs and trees are even closer. 200 feet. 150 feet. Mm, are we gonna crash? No, we're fine. Why, I remember when I first started coming to this island five years ago, we used to have to land by ship and that was rough. This is nothing. Grant looks at Ellie and smiles confidently. Ellie grips her knees, trying to smile back. Below, in the fog, the lighted helipad with its huge glowing X comes into view. Inside the helicopter, a rapid beeping sound like a stall alarm blares. And with that, the helicopter settles. The sounds decreasing. Ah, here we are, safe and sound. Nothing to it, really. They start down the hill towards a big overlook. The helicopter almost immediately lifts off, thundering away. Then, silence. The cry of strange birds in the mist. We can't help but feel stranded. The main vista is socked in. A sign points out features in the valley hidden in the fog. Ah, too bad. There's a wonderful view from here. Well, let's get you settled in at the lodge. As they climb into parked land cruisers, Grant hears a faint cry. Not a bird. Something. He snaps his head around. But the car engine starts, drowning it out. And they drive off. The land cruisers pull up to a gate in the fence, which surrounds the lodge. The head tour guide, Ed Regis, stands outside. We last saw him bringing the injured men to the doctor. He welcomes Grant, Ellie, and Hammond. Welcome back, Mr. Hammond. Welcome, welcome. Glad to have you with us. You're our first guests. We're sure your stay with us will be very comfortable. The group moves into a green tunnel of overarching palms leading toward the lobby. Everywhere. Extensive and elaborate paintings emphasize the feeling that they are entering a new world, a prehistoric tropical world, and leaving the normal world behind. As they pass by a waterfall in front of the lodge's entrance, Ellie stops next to an outstretched fern bush. She examines it without touching. Those are Serena veriformans. In fact, a whole cluster of them. They were abundant more than 200 million years ago. Regis says, showing off his knowledge. Yes, I know. Unfortunately, the spores of veriformans contain a deadly deta carboline alkaloid. Even touching them can make you sick. The toxin is 50 times more poisonous than oleander. Regis is not sure how to respond. If you'll come this way, I've also brought my grandchildren. Their parents are getting a divorce, and I thought they'd like to get away and have some fun with us. In the center of the lobby is a glassed atrium. The outer walls of the lobby are without glass, open to the outside, except for a series of thin horizontal bars, which enclose the area almost like an elegant cage. A half wall of stone provides a barrier to keep guests from touching the bars, where there is a slight hum of electricity. Waiting in the lobby are two kids, Tim Murphy, 11 and bespeckled, and Lex Murphy, a tomboy of seven, wearing a baseball hat, her mitts slung over her shoulder. 
say hello to... No kidding. Tim interrupts, unable to contain himself. Grandpa said he might be coming. Wow, Alan Grant. Hammond beams. He's delivered. Grant smiles and shakes his hand. Hi, Tim. I have your book. Lost World of the Dinosaurs. It's practically my favorite book. Daddy says that Tim has dinosaurs on the brain. Lex is less impressed. Well, I have that same problem. Grant says, shaking her hand. Daddy says dinosaurs are really stupid. He says Tim should get out and play more sports. (laughs) I see. Chill out, Lex. And what do you like, Lex? Ellie says, stepping in. Third base. The last five games. I've been hitting 300. 300? That's pretty good. Yeah, I stopped cocking my wrists. Lex calms down as she gets attention, idly tossing her ball up and down. So, are you digging now? Yes. Actually, we just found a large number of very good velociraptor skeletons. The group stands next to the guest register. Lex drops her ball and it bounces towards the outer perimeter. She runs after it. Hold it there. Lex stops and watches her ball bounce over the stone wall and hit the bars, which spark with electricity. Hammond speaks, trying to be light. We'll get it for you later. (laughs) Uh, The bars are electrified for your security. We've got some pretty large animals out in the park. Grant and Ellie look at each other. We've been to all the game parks in East Africa. I've never seen a need for anything like this. Hammond only grins. This is a very unusual wildlife park. Later, Grant and Ellie enter a room directly across from Tim and Lex's room. The TV automatically comes on. Hello, and welcome to the exciting new resort from Hammond Genetic Technologies. We hope you enjoy your stay with us. Grant tosses their bag on the bed and looks up at the skylight. Bars in the ceiling. And electric bars in the fence. Windows are small, too. It's a little like prison. Grant presses a button, but the program continues. I can't turn off the TV. Ellie picks up the remote control and presses mute. She moves close behind Grant. I'll give you something else to look at. Grant turns from the television and smiles. 